Hello everybody, welcome to Demonologist. Uh, I'm not doing a voiceover this time. <laughs> this is kind of like actually like I'm in the game because today we're gonna be talking about um, all the evidences, all the evidence equipment, I should say. Um, so I, I'm probably kind of late to the party on this and I'm probably gonna be late to the party on a lot of videos because there's probably a lot of videos already on explaining the exorcisms and all that stuff, which I will be doing. I'll be covering all the maps and stuff like that pretty, pretty soon. Uh, but in this video, uh, we are going to be talking about all the uh, evidence equipments and what they do. Uh, we'll do some other stuff too because I bought everything and I cried a little <laughs> when I bought everything. Um, if you don't know what a full freaking tent looks like of equipment, this is what it looks like. Um, uh, help me. <laughs> um, but yes, so first what we're going to do is actually i think i'm on cyclone street yes so i'll show video demonstrations and stuff like that just examples of the equipment and stuff and uh yeah let's get into it so the first um evidence item would be the emf we'll start over here uh the emf looks like this pretty neat very neat thing uh if i stand over in the light kind of looks like this um Basically, what the EMF does is it um, it can it pretty much give you an evidence. So if you go into the journal right here, it's this evidence right here, EMF level 5. Now, you might be wondering, how do you exactly know what is EMF level 5? Well, not every single ghost has EMF level 5. For example, there's a ghost. Oh, shit, don't, don't click on that. Uh, there's a ghost in here that is not EMF level 5. So like the Myling. Um, one of its evidences is not EMF level 5. It is ectoplasm, spirit box, and freezing test, which we'll cover in a little bit. Um, and basically, uh, what the evidence, like, what the EMF can be helpful with, I guess, is basically finding the ghost room. So it's probably the most smartest object to bring in with you, and it will help you a lot with, like, knowing where the ghost is. It is, uh, directional, so, uh, it doesn't matter how close the... EMF is to something, say, if it threw a pot off this table. It wouldn't be, um, like, it wouldn't matter if it's close to it or not. It matters if you're pointing at the object. So if I'm pointing up, it will go probably down to two. If I point towards it, it will go higher, depending on the EMF reading of it. So it is directional. And I'll show you a little clip real quick of what that would exactly look like when you get EMF level five. Alrighty, uh, so that was uh, EMF, uh, so we'll go on to the next one, we'll place our thing right there. Oh, also I forgot to mention, look, little CJ, look at that, he moves, <laughs> he walks when you move, <laughs> which is really cool, uh, we, I decided to name him CJ, uh, why, because uh, one of the phasmophobia devs, are named, their name is CJ, so, in tribution, <laughs> also you can go to the settings and turn it off. So you can actually hide it. This is what it looks like when it's off. But of course, what fun is that? Also, he he's a kind of acts as a little friend for you. Like a little friend that walks with you. He actually freaks out depending on what level of EMF it is, which is actually really cool. Alright, so next um, equipment would be the spirit box. So we'll do spirit box next. This is pretty cool. Um so spirit box pretty much allows you to talk to the ghost. Uh, I believe there's some questions that you can ask it. I don't know all the questions, but you can ask it questions like, can you talk? Um, how old are you? Where are you? Are you here? I'm pretty sure you can probably ask it more questions, but I'm not too sure. But those are like kind of like the main questions you can ask. Um, so yeah, so you go into the ghost room. This will only work in the ghost room. And like I said, not every single ghost has this evidence. But if you do get it, this little ghost right here on the top uh, will light up blue. So you see that little uh, ghost? That will light up blue. And usually it'll make like an audio cue going like a radio static, uh, which I'll show you video, uh, eh, dem <laughs> video demonstration. Um, also, if you hold uh, left click, you can bring it closer to your mouth. And this is how you talk to it. You could, in theory, go around and talk like this. 
but because uh, I actually have had that happen before I was just talking randomly walking around with the spirit box and it did pick up while it was like this but this is how you actually get your voice to be picked up and yeah so I'll show a video clip on what that looks like where are you are you here can you talk where are you spirit box Perfect, perfect. So that is two equipment, two uh, like evidence equipments. Also, I would like to let you know that not everything here you will have. Um, actually, the equipments that you will have is a flashlight, a UV light, ecto glass, spirit box, EMF, ESG, and that's actually pretty much about it. Oh, and the easel canvas, of course. Um, that's pretty much the only equipment you'll actually get. The rest you have to buy, and I'll explain those after in a minute too uh so we're on to our third evidence piece it, which is the ecto glass so the ectoplasm glass is actually kind of cool um it's used actually to do uh, some other objectives too so sometimes there's optional objectives that ask you to like like right here use the ectoplasm glass to help find the time of the ghost's death so you would like look at a wall and look for the time uh which i will Show you guys how to do in a later video if you guys don't already know how to do it the video would just be kind of like for new people that's getting into the game and stuff like that because i want to help new people as much as i can because i love when um like i love people getting into this game it's really cool to see um like people kind of like trying this game out and stuff like that which is really really awesome because this game is worth it um uh, people should at least try this game once and see if they like it if they don't then they don't but this game is freaking awesome uh, shout out to the freaking devs of this game, man. Clock, clock wizard games. <laughs> uh, but yes, so, sorry. So the ectoplasm glass is used to, uh, basically look for, uh, ghostly, uh, leftovers. Uh, basically just, uh, ectoplasm from the ghost. So what that would look like is a little white stain. It's like, um, it's, it looks like a smear on the wall. It's kind of noticeable. You have to keep an eye out because uh, sometimes it can be hard to miss, but it's pretty straightforward. And I'll show you a clip on what that looks like. Uh, right before I do that, though, uh, if you actually left click, you can actually look into it. So instead of like looking around through like that, you can actually zoom in and look around like that. So I'll show you a video clip of what ectoplasm stains would look like if you had uh, a specific ghost with ectoplasm stains. Right, awesome. So, now that we're done that piece of equipment, we're on to the next one, which would be... <laughs> I mean, it's not really evidence equipment, but uh, your flashlight. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Lights your way, so you don't get spooked. Um, oh god, I'm already at 82. Um, yep. Actually, they added with the new update, if you have an item now, you can actually press... Well, it would be... I, I forgot. What button was it? F? I think it would be F. To toggle, I'd switch mine to T, like Faz. Uh, but yes, you can now toggle the flashlight without actually having to pull it out, which is actually really cool. So, yeah, that's the flashlight. Uh, next up would be the UV light. This is actually really cool. Uh, not the only fact that the batteries say Wizard Cell at the back, which I find awesome because, uh, you know, wi Block Wizard games. Yeah, it's, it's, it's genius. It's honestly genius. <laughs> um, so this is UV light. This is used to find fingerprints right here. Fingerprints. Um, you can find fingerprints. Um, honestly, on uh, I think only right now you can find fingerprints on doors, door handles, and on light switches. That's pretty much about it. Um, typically, what that would obviously be, if you hear a door kind of open or close, go check it. Like, and not just check one side. Try to check both sides because it could be on the back or the front. Sometimes it also won't only just do that. Um, if you check the doorknob, hey, it's not there. Try checking the middle of the door because sometimes it can actually touch a 
like the middle of the door too. If you hear light switches, I can just flick a light like off uh, or on. Check the light switch. If it's not, then you can obviously cross out fingerprints because it won't be fingerprints. But I don't know if there's some ghosts because some ghosts don't actually have data. Some ghosts might actually try to hide fingerprints or decrease the chance. We don't know yet, but uh, for now, yeah, I would scratch it off if there's no fingerprints. Also, when they spam the light, like, you know, when they when a ghost does that, that's usually typically like when you should go check the uh, for fingerprints. I'll show you exactly what that looks like um, right now. Right, perfect. All right, so we're almost done. We're actually almost done. We have uh, two pieces left. Uh, so yeah, uh, the next equipment is ESG. So this one's a little bit confusing at first. Uh, I, I remember like kind of like being confused on what it does because it's it's such a like, yeah, you have the EMF. There's a number, beep, 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 you know, spirit box, you talk into it. Ectoplasm, you look through it. Uh, this one is kind of different. This one, it actually had a uh, fix recently too because it was very hard to get but you can actually place it down by holding g and you can actually rotate it um actually i've watched a couple videos on people uh not knowing that you can actually rotate it like they would like that you can actually rotate it using your mouse scroll so which is really cool you can place it down and it kind of looks like that it spins and well you'd be like well what what does it do uh the ghost will pop up on top of it so you put this in the ghost room once you find the ghost using like an EMF or um, such and basically the ghost will pop up on top of it. Now obviously again, if the ghost doesn't have this evidence, it won't. So it's not guaranteed all the time. Uh, but when you do see it, uh, or actually when you don't see it, you will actually hear an audio cue as well. It'll sound like a zap, it goes like like that. Uh, I'll show example obviously in a video. Um, but yeah, the ghost will actually appear on top of it for a quick second. Um, and that's how you know it's ESG. You can actually see it through um, here as well. You can see it through the camera. And actually, there's one ghost in this game called the Gorio that actually doesn't show up on the ESG in person. So you actually have to look through it on camera, which will be tricky. But if you have it narrowed down and you know it's either Gorio or a couple other ghosts then i would advise coming back to the van if you do have a video camera of course but there is another way to check and that would be to back out of the room and uh i because th i'm not too sure if it's only on video cam but ah, just uh i would say get out of the room stand a little bit further away from the room and look into the room and see if esg pops up i think that's how it kind of works actually you know what? i'll read it right now just so i'm not like I don't want to give you false information. No, it doesn't interact with ESG if someone is nearby since it is a very rare type of ghost. We don't have much information other than that. Coral does not interact with ESG if someone's nearby. Okay, so yeah, I don't think it only shows up on camera. I think it's just if you're further away. Uh, so that's ESG. Uh, I'll show you a quick clip right now of it. All right, fantastic, you are doing great. Uh, if you made it this far, um, we have one more piece of evidence left, and that is the easel canvas. This is really cool. So, <laughs> because I steal it, <laughs> I, I use it for NFTs, and I sell the ghost's art. And yes, the ghost's art. The easel canvas gives the ghost the ability to draw and paint which is really cool. And there's actually already a couple kind of paint 
uh, paintings for the ghost too and they're actually th um on their trello they're talking about adding more which is really exciting i want to see like the different art and stuff like that and i'll obviously probably add more as the time comes but for now we have probably like at least i think eight or ten or something like that um but yes so the easel canvas basically same thing as the esg you hold g to drop it or whatever your keybind is for dropping you use the mouse scroll to turn it it's really cool you can rotate it like this Place it down in the ghost room and wait. Um, so actually another thing I didn't mention with this, I am so sorry. Um, ESG actually got a buff. It has a 10% chance of actually, it has a 10% increase for the chance of actually showing up on ESG for the ghost. And also they made it so there's actually key words for the ghost um, to like, I guess, better the chances of it showing up. And that is two commands which is manifest and show yourself. So, um, yeah, just wanted to point that out. I forgot to mention that. So evil, easel, eh, evil canvas. I mean, technically evil canvas, but <laughs> easel canvas. Um, yeah, it's just exactly that. You wait until it paints. It can actually take a long time. They haven't fixed this yet, but they will be eventually probably working on this. Um, I know they will, but uh, right for right now, you just kind of wait. Um, and there's actually a cool item that they recently add that could also increase the chances of these two devices if you are having no luck. Um, so yeah, that's the last piece of evidence equipment here, but we're going to move on to the optional equipment or the optional, um, belongings and stuff. So yeah, we'll start on this side right here. This bad boy. This is a crucifix. Now this is used to basically defend yourself. Um, there's only two, so you got to use them wisely. But this, as long as you hold it in your hand, not when you place it on the floor, doesn't work that way. You have to hold it in your hand. Um, when the ghost actually starts hunting, um, you can use the crucifix to um, basically defend yourself. Actually, there's a ghost, I think, called the... What's it called? It's called the... Uh, I think the Abaddon? Ab Abaddon, yes. The Abaddon is widely regarded as the... Uh, most cunning type of ghost they will not hunt their prey if they are defending themselves but we usually hunt the defenseless so it doesn't mean all the time but this ghost you gotta be careful this ghost will actually pass you if it sees you holding a crucifix it will walk right by you sometimes and then go for maybe say your teammate that doesn't so if you're trying to defend your teammate you might want to try a little bit harder um because <laughs> um that ghost is not forgiving um, so yeah, that's pretty much what the crucifix does, and I'll show you a quick example of what that looks like. Did it just eat your crucifix? Yep, let's leave. Alrighty, moving on to the next item. It would be a thermometer. Now, um, this is kind of like around the range of freezing temperatures. Uh, you have to buy this, by the way. You have to, this is what it looks like. Sorry, the light is like, eee. okay. So the thermometer uh, works kind of like to tell you what the temperature of the room is. Um, you could use this, uh, you don't have to, because typically there's actually one way you can figure out that the ghost uh, is freezing temperatures. Or the ghost room is freezing temperatures and your evidence is that is your breath you will start breathing it almost looks like um ash but you can actually start breathing um like like freezing temps like your cold breath um that is one way without this so technically you don't need this but it is helpful because typically the ghost room would be probably around 10 and under 
And then once it starts getting to that zero mark and then under, that's how you know that it is freezing temps. So, yeah, so like right now, see, it's uh, 10, and then I move out here. Doesn't change. It just kind of fluctuates sometimes. But yes, I will show you an example of what that looks like when you get freezing temps with the thermometer, and obviously when uh, you don't have the thermometer in your hand and uh, you can see your breath. Alrighty, moving on to the next one. You guys are doing great. Uh, camera. This is actually uh, used for one purpose right now, that is. And that is to, well, if you have a dark screen, you can actually take a picture. You have unlimited photos, by the way. And you can use it as a light source to check, uh, you know, where you are, I guess. And also, it is used for taking a solid picture of the ghost. Um, now, I did this through my abandoned exorcism guide, which I will be doing an updated version of that because they did change the optional objective, uh, opt optional objectives a little bit. So it's a little different now, uh, but I'll be doing update videos on that. But pretty much what I did was um, I, pretty, I held it in my hand and I kept telling it to show itself. Uh, can I take a picture? Show yourself. Eventually, you'll hear this like... It, like, it, you'll think that it's hunting you, but it's actually not. You'll see the physical form of the ghost. It usually happens when you're around the ghost room, and it's, like, around you. You just want to take a picture of it. That's it. Like that. When it's showing itself. You might just want to take a picture, and then it'll count as your objective. But you won't always get that objective, so it's always good to bring this along with you. Uh, if you want to actually go through the whole exorcism and stuff like that, but... Yes, this is optional and is not needed, but it's, it could be used for the optional objectives. Um, and yeah, so that is the camera. I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, a repeat. Um, I'll show you what that kind of looks like to take a picture and what sounds to kind of look for when you want to take a picture of the ghost. To look through it. Oh, oh, that's so creepy. Oh, no, no, hunting. no, no. Is it hunting? All right, awesome, guys. All right, so we're going to move on to the next one, and that is sanity pills. Uh, these are exactly what the name describes them as. Uh, you just pop one, and it increases your sanity. Now, depending on what difficulty you are on, it will kind of differentiate. So on easy, I think you gain, I think, 40 or 50 sanity, something along the lines. When you're on medium difficulty, you go up like, I say probably 25, 30. Uh, 25, I think, or 20. And then when you're on hard, I think it goes up by 15 or something like that. So, um, yeah, it's always good to carry more than just one of these bad boys. But I will show you what it looks like. Actually, you can't really see it. I will show you right now. Actually, we don't need to do that. Um, so I'm on easy. So we'll see how much my sanity goes by. It goes, it's so, right now it's at 55% and we'll see how much it actually goes up by. So this is the animation. It's really cool. Whoop. Give us one pill. Uh, this, this bad boy also costed me like a lot of freaking money. Uh, you know, um, uh, inflation. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So you see it bumped me up from 55 to pretty much 100. It went to 99. Pretty much 100 sanity. So that's around 50 sanity per pill. Uh, you can have up to four per pill on uh, easy mode. Uh, so yeah, next equipment or next item would be a candle. This is really cool. This actually has more meaning than you would think. So yeah, you can use it as a kind of small light source to see around. It's not really helpful, but I mean, you could still use it. Um, there is one objective. So it's pretty much used for an objective uh, right now. Uh, get the ghost to blow out a candle. So you just put it in the ghost room and say, can you blow out the candle? And then wait a really long time for that to happen. And then once that happens, there you go. Objective complete. But it actually does more than this. 
this is actually tied to your sanity. So when you have this in your hand, you actually are lessening the uh, rate at which you lose sanity. So when you're in dark rooms, when you're around, it doesn't completely stop your sanity drain, but it does slow it down, which is really neat. So if you are kind of scarce on sanity and you have no more sanity pills and you need to complete one objective and you're trying to find something uh, and you're at like kind of like hunting threshold, you're at like around 60 and you don't want to go to 50 really fast, you can bring in a candle and it will lessen, not by too much, but it will lessen the effects of the uh, sanity drain, which is really neat. So, um, yeah, that is a candle. Also, you could just click it to blow it out and... All right, moving on to the, uh, I will save this for last, uh, camera. Yes, it is a tripod with a iPhone 10 on it. Uh, so yeah, this is what it looks like. If you step outside, you can see, you can see through it. I will place this right here in front of this line, like so. You can actually just hold G and rotate it like this. I believe the front of the camera is always the opposite of the peg. So see this little thing on the side? Uh, that uh, is pretty much the back of it. So the way I'm facing it and seeing through it. So you want to face that towards an object or away from an object. Point it towards yourself. That's always where the front will be. Right here. So it's pointing out that sign. If we come back into our trusty tent, we can see right there. It shows up on our screen, which is really cool. And if you have more cameras, for your example, I'll pick up two because you can actually do that. <laughs> um, I'm going to put it right in front of this car. Our nice uh, vehicle. So we can rotate it by holding our drop button and using the mouse scroll. And then I will put a camera right here. Look at myself. There we go. So, um, strangely enough, we do not pop up on camera, <laughs> but you can hit this button to uh, change the camera source, and you can just swap through your cameras. Really neat. It's it's really cool and very useful to cover multiple areas of a room or just the house in general. Um, there'll probably be more to do with that one day. They might have an upgrade for it, but that's what it does. Um. And uh, yeah, so now we're actually on to our last piece of equipment. And that is the newest item, which is called the Fulu Talisman. And what this bad boy is used for is to actually increase uh, activity and interaction from the ghost. So pretty much what you do is very simple. You right click instead of left click and it starts burning just like this. Sorry, not, sorry. not right click, left click. It's, it's still left click. It'll start burning like this. And you can actually throw it down. It doesn't do anything. It still burns when you throw it down. If you're holding your hand, it looks like that. Little sparks, which is really cool. Basically, while this is burning, it's pretty much increasing the interaction rate. So if you have this in front of this or near it, you'll maybe have a chance of actually increasing the chances of it finally drawing or finally using the ESG, which is the two equipments that are like the hardest to actually get a response out of. And um, it doesn't just only do it for that duration. I actually think it lingers for a little bit. So I think it actually stays the interaction boost for a little bit. I don't know if it stays forever. I'm not too sure. But being that there is more than one, I think it's safely uh, it's safe to say that it does not last forever and it probably does stop around maybe 30 seconds to a minute after. So yeah, that is pretty much all the equipment um, of this game. Uh, this is pretty much all the equipment for now. There's obviously going to be uh, way more equipment uh, being added later on in the future. Uh, see over here, there's plenty more room for more equipment. I'm really excited to see what they're going to add. And um, also want to uh, thank everyone for the actual support that I've been getting on the channel. Um, I do have another channel. It's uh, called Chard, and that's my main. I made this one as a horror channel because I love horror games. I love ghost hunting games, and I love teaching people about horror games, but I didn't really get the chance to do that with Phasmophobia, which is one of my all-time favorite games. Um, but I get the chance to do it with this, and I'm very excited to start doing this stuff for you guys and showing you updates and stuff like that, and keeping you up to date with everything demonologists. So 
Um, I just want to thank you guys for the support that you've been uh, giving the videos and stuff like that. Uh, I actually blew my mind out of the water and um, I'm just very grateful for that. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, and uh, this has been Tether and I will catch you all in the next one. Alright, bye-bye.